Welcome back to Glampalooza. Oh my goodness, you're going to love this one. I don't know how this happened, but I got connected with Casey Cole Corbin and wow, you're going to love to hear about his experiences with hosting and also how he can teach you how to host. Stay tuned for this episode of Glampalooza. Glampalooza, the ultimate guide to all things glamping. Discover the beauty and luxury of outdoor living with expert hosts and enthusiasts. Get ready to unplug, reconnect, and experience the magic of glamping. Join us now on Glampalooza. Welcome back to Glampalooza. I have such a treat for you today. Not only does our guest have a beautiful glamp site, but there's more. And I'm not going to tell you yet but you're going to definitely want to stay tuned, especially if you are new to the glamping world as a host or you're contemplating, hey, I could do that maybe, could I? Well, welcome, Casey. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate being here. This is awesome. I've been waiting for this. I'm excited. This is, this is exciting. So tell Me us too. first, uh, tell us, you know, how did you get into glamping? Oh, gosh. Wow. Um, you know, it's it's an odd thing because one is is that you're looking at someone who hates camping. <laughs> I have four children. They're so deprived. I've gone on, I've, I've taken them like on two camping trips their entire life. It's just terrible. <laughs> and it's There's because, bugs and heat. And oh, and man. If, it's, <laughs> if they could just air condition a tent, I said, you know, and, and make a really nice mattress, then I'd go. And so that's when I found glamping, which is kind of those things. And so I was like, okay well i like i like i like this this is good and so we we started a uh, a little bit of glamping business and um it's going really well uh to uh my surprise to my wife's surprise to a lot of my friends <laughs> going it's really working <laughs> <laughs> that thing that crazy thing you're doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> a very crazy thing i guess really the it, it's a every year about the time that most people are making resolutions, New Year's resolutions, right after Christmas, right? You start thinking your head shifts and they, uh, I always get like this, this word for the year, right? It's like a theme for the year. And the year before was just like the Nike, excuse me, you know, just do it, but add afraid on there. Just do it afraid. And uh, fear had been something that had been in my life. It had, I had noticed that it was sabotaging a lot of my efforts in life. I'm a counselor. I've been counseling for 25 years. So my head's kind of in that mindset game and the psychology behind it. And, uh, and it was just time for me to, if I, if, if I felt like I was intimidated to go down a certain path, that that, that was itself the motivation for going down that path. You know, I, I envisioned, I would mentally envision myself uh, like on a night with one of those, one of those javelins, right? Yeah, yeah. Hanging on a horse and whatever I was afraid of, I was just turning around, charging after it, right? You know, it was just my theme for that year. Uh, do it afraid. And so that was good. I had a lot of personal growth, you know, in that. Then this year, right, which was actually in um, the beginning of 2020, or actually 2019, uh, the theme was, just do it looking foolish Ooh. yeah yeah so i had this kind of fear of man of, of opinions you know maybe some approval addiction you know going on whereas i wanted people to think that i was smart right uh you know i i actually was in special education as late as high school i'm on the autism spectrum have dyslexia you know so you know i was I, me going you know <laughs> <laughs> literally riding the short bus to school <laughs> you know this thing was, <laughs> yeah i can see yeah yeah so i had uh, this sensitivity to it and it was just time in my life in my 50s to finally you know tackle that and go what, what am i do- doing right you know i'm limiting myself because i don't want other people to think that i don't make you know smart decisions so so it was the theme i was pre- fully prepared to start this glamping business in our backyard and it completely fail but that kind of also be the it'd be okay you know it's like i, you know, I kind of knew you know that i'm just going to grow through this failure experience and not be afraid of it anymore and you know that will you know i've lived long enough to know that we grow from our failures so that's yeah. not no big deal took me about three months to convince my wife that this was something that we would <laughs> you wanted to what <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah because yeah, i know that uh, a lot of your listeners i've listened i've watched some of your shows and they're absolutely great love it have acres of property and it's rustic and it's you know and that's where we're going we want to do that but right now we live on a half acre about a mile from the mall 
in the center of a metropolitan area uh, in Valdosta, Georgia. Uh, I mean, we have neighbors all, completely all around us, right? Uh, we do have the benefit of a little creek that runs through the back of our property, but on the other side of that creek is house, 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 you know, back Waterfront to property. It. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the water is about two feet wide. <laughs> Sometimes when it rains, it's about 12, but... <laughs> yeah. But it was just kind of a crazy idea to do a, a, a glamping site, you know, in our, you know, in our little lot in the back. And so one thing that helped convince my wife is I said, if I can get, if we can rent it for six months and I get the experience and we get the feel for, it, is this something that we want to do? You know, cause hosting, there's, there's different ways to do it. And I don't knock people that, that do it from kind of a standoffish approach but but we're we're we really test out really high in hospitality we like hosting people we like taking care of people she's a teacher i'm a counselor you know just kind of comes naturally to us so when our when our guests get here we, we 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 give them their space of course but you know we're there for them you know if they need anything we'll run and get it you know i mean we're just the, that kind of host so we yeah. we enjoy that and it shows up in our reviews and it shows up in our five-star ratings and stuff you know so uh it, but, we, but did we did we want to do this and so i said put this put this camper in our backyard six months if we can get away with it because <laughs> it's not zoned it's yeah. not permitted and it's not licensed all right you know it still isn't two years later uh <laughs> which we could talk more about that in a little bit but here we put this thing in our backyard and um it's funny because about a year later, the city marshal um, comes to the front door and uh, knocks on the door and says, "There's, yeah, I understand you guys have something in the backyard that we need to look at. And my wife said, can you please wait for my husband? <laughs> and so he goes away and he, he, he but, but he, uh, uh, when I, when I do meet with him, he come, you know, he comes back and say, coming back. I was just like, I'm just kind of like, okay, there's no reason. I can't hide this thing. <laughs> you see nothing. <laughs> That's right, right, right. I can't hide that it's not really <laughs> legally plumbed, you know, into the yeah. sewer system and, you know, all of this stuff. Uh, that uh, he looks around and um, I'm just being honest with him. You know, I said, look, I've, I've met with Matt, you know, in the zoning office and I've met with these people here, he said, it's un, unzoned, unpermitted, you know, um, because one is, is that our town doesn't have a policy on Airbnb. They don't know, you know which is most areas, right? Mm -hmm. Unique sites like glamping, they really don't know what to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're, they're just like, so I had this, uh, I told him about the hour and a half long conversation that I had with the zoning, you know, the guy that said of zoning where I had, it was, it was COVID had started at this point. So I had called in and I asked the secretary three questions and she said, she said, well, the answer to your first question is no. Your second question is no. And your third question is no, okay, but, <laughs> but I will set up an appointment for you to be able to meet with Matt. <laughs> and would you believe an hour and a half later after the conversation, he had talked to me about how a workaround for each one of those no's, all right? Now I understand, you know, you and I are, you know, in a, uh, know uh, Rob Albasalo with uh, Roe Bilt, you know, and in his community is that a lot of people face that very same situation. Mm -hmm. Is that zoning and permitting and they say, it just, you know, read the rules and it looks like absolutely this can't happen. But once you get in there and you humanize it, you know, you're, you're meeting, you know, real person to real person and you're, you know, giving it some, some space and you're being humble and you're not trying to come in like you know you're going to do this i'm the taxpayer here i pay your salary kind of crap is that they they will come around and they will usually help you and mm. and work it out you know and so and sometimes it just takes time so we're still in that time period because two years later we're still not permitted still not zoned right yeah. <laughs> and uh which is fine right I, I found out for anybody who's curious, if you're if you're wanting to start small, it's kind of my theme. Start small and and doing a short term rental and a glamping opportunity is uh, uh, if if you just get started, everything seems to kind of work its way out, right? So here I am. Let's go back to that day where I'm standing there with the city marshal. I mean, he's one letter, one cease and desist letter away from you know shutting me down. He doesn't say what he's going to do or how he's going to say it. He said, he said, actually, he said, me and my wife read all 55 of the reviews that are on your Airbnb site last night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he, he said, I turned to my wife and I said, we need to go stay with Casey so we can get some of Mary's cinnamon rolls. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. And at that point, I thought, I got him. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he looked around and he said everything's done right the problem is you just don't have a permit right and so he kind of left and so um you know i, I got on uh, rob's site and several other sites and i said what do you think what well, should i you know i've got people coming next weekend you know and you know booked out the next couple of months you know should i you know we shut down and they said no keep on tracking keep on trucking you know sure enough never heard back never got a cease and desist order wow. never got anything like that and he gave me what is the idea is is that the, the utilities are just not permitted back there mm. so i'm in the process of putting in i have a jacuzzi in the rear of the property that will take electricity mm. water yeah. and sewage right and so we'll get the the utilities permitted back there which I, which is not the same thing as it being permitted and zoned and, yeah <laughs> but it gets close, us closer right? <laughs> Wow. That's how we get started. <laughs> oh, that's amazing, Casey. <laughs> that's some tense moments, but as soon as he mentions Mary Cinnamon rules, you're like, oh, I got it now. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which really pisses me off. I got to tell you. Okay, so you know, we're <laughs> I'm greeting people. I'm taking them in there. They're looking around. You know, I've, I've totally changed this thing thing because you know, it looked like a modular home. You know, a mobile home. You know, at first, it's cute. You know, it's, it's it looks like a log cabin. But I, you know, did chalk paint every surface redid everything you know and i'm the one doing the work here and what do they say cinnamon rolls yes, <laughs> exactly i'm like Jeez, you know? <laughs> hello <laughs> i'm the one that made this thing that's right that's right a little respect right? that's right but i bet they're very good cinnamon rolls <laughs> they are very very good cinnamon rolls i mean yeah. can you blame them in the end <laughs> not at all not at all it, it, it was clever i gotta say this is there's a few things that we we did right there's a, few, a lot of things we did wrong and have adjusted this is one of the from from the get-go we give them these warmed up you know cinnamon rolls at checkout mm -hmm. so when they're they're leaving they still have that sweet taste when they're doing their review they still have that sweet taste of mary cinnamon rolls there you go. <laughs> while they're pushing in five stars <laughs> yes exactly before you take a second bite go ahead <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> make them happy make them happy yeah Oh, that's fantastic, man. So, yeah, so I guess, you know, it sounds like they're probably just that whole potential cease and desist probably got buried under a pile of. Yeah, the the, yeah. the reasons for it, it's always good to understand both the letter of the law and the spirit of the law, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the intention? What's it trying to do? How did it come to be? So living in the city limits, it's actually not legal for anyone to sleep in an RV. And people mm -hmm. do it all the time. You know, uh, your, your parents come in, they park it in the driveway, they're sleeping out there, you know, um, while they're visiting the grandchildren for a week at your house once a year, you know, whatever. I mean, that happens all the time, sure. right? It's not legal. And here's why is because it was meant to, you know, because we, we live in a nice neighborhood. The um, if that law wasn't in place, then, you know, uh, all of a sudden and they've seen this happen is uh, their three kids uh we got some failure to launch issues you know there they all get a, a you know an rv put it in the backyard and they've yeah. got a you know <laughs> it looks like a trash dump you know and no time at all and it's devaluing the neighborhood so sure. it's a good law right yeah. and it's a good thing to have in place i wish that they could do it in a way that allowed good things to go on see none of my neighbors mind right, right. and they, they know um, they know that I've actually been keeping my yard up better since we exactly, you know, are now yeah. business. And yeah, it, you know, there's, it, it has blessed, you know, it's been a good thing, you know, for them. Uh, they don't mind at all. And, you know, we have very strict uh, whenever we're another thing that we did that was that was smart is uh, I send a confirmation. I send a uh, text as soon as somebody books, mm -hmm. whether it's on Airbnb or VRBO or Hip Camp. And it's it's just, uh, it's it's basically the rules, and they have to agree to it, or we cancel the booking. Mm -hmm. And it's things like, um, which is not super standard. I don't know why it's not standard. I think you would think that they would want to do that. But one is one advantage that we have is, is there can't be any parties because oh, this gosh. thing's tiny. It's 120 square feet, right? Yeah. So there's not going to be a lot of you know, there's not opportunity for that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Um, now, I've been a substance abuse counselor for 25 years. <clears throat> Whatever a listener feels about marijuana, that's fine. You, you feel that way, okay? 
for me, my children share the backyard. I don't want that on my property. I don't want police to be called. I don't want, you know, uh, something like that paraphernalia to be left behind and then I go to jail. I mean, I don't want any of those kind of things. And so I'm very, very, very strict about that, including like we even put in this this thing they sign off on is, is that medical marijuana does not transfer from state to state. So if it comes from another state and in Georgia, it's still not legal to smoke right. for medical marijuana. You, know, you can take pills, you know, THC pills, et cetera. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Um, but I don't want that taking place on my property. Right. And so it, you would it, it, probably about 10 percent <laughs> of the people that book or inquire and I send them that. Right. They they return back and they say, oh, OK, well, I don't think we're, we're a very good fit for your property. And then they make up some excuse for bed space or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I got you want your weed. <laughs> <laughs> so we could have 10 percent more, you know, I <laughs> Perhaps, you know, more bookings, not worth it, you know, to yeah. me. So <laughs> that's smart. I like that idea, though. Have, you know, here's your rules, especially like sound. I think that's probably the biggest yeah. complaint that neighbors could have. That's exactly right. So, you know, having, you know, very tight, you know, I mean, not like, okay, you got to whisper after 6 p.m., but, yeah. you know, reasonable, but enforced and having them agree to that. I think that's yeah. really yeah. smart. If they, if they don't agree, then then I really do. I contact them, you know, numerous ways and say, you got to agree to this. So I'm canceling the booking. Yeah. Um, blessedly, I've never had to cancel it on my end. Yeah. Um, I've always just worked it out so that they cancel, which is a big deal as a host because oh, you get sure. dinged if you cancel and you have to have substantiate reasons. And even if you do have good reasons, there's still some algorithm that oh, yeah. bumps you down on when people see you, yeah, you know, when definitely. they, when they search and stuff. So you don't want that. You want to, you want to do everything just right and with, uh, with Airbnb and the other platforms, but <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's but that's been good. It solved a lot of problems. We had one oh. horror store story mm-hmm. early on. <clears throat> we learned so much. It was uh, two people that were actually found out they were locals. We really avoid uh, renting to locals. Oh, wow. Now. Yeah. Okay. Tell me why. I hadn't thought of that. Well, uh, it, in <laughs> the why is somebody staying locally when they have a house local? I don't right? wonder, right? Yeah. So they think it, it's had, it has happened and we've, we've had some people that were great. You know, they were just like, oh, we're going to take the kids to something different, you know, even though we live, you know, in the next town over, or we live in the same town. But otherwise, one is that you're, we're, what is the motivation for doing that? All right. Yeah. So classically, especially in a larger uh, Airbnb rental, is they're looking for a house to trash, a house to party, right? Ooh, and, you know, so, yeah. so, yeah, they're just like, they don't want to trash their own house. So they'll rent out this one for 300 bucks and trash it and then, you know, leave the next day and whatever. Uh, so you, one is, is that it, it's, it's discouraged that way. A lot of people do screen out local folks, you know, for that yeah. reason. Um, being a unique stay, if they can convince me that, you know, they're, they want the kids to enjoy the loft, you know, bed and that they're going to go to the theme park that's in town, you know, they're going to make a little staycation out of it. Then I'm all for it. Right. And yeah. we've had several that have been great. These two folks, though, last night, so they, they were actually had been found out later. They'd been evicted from their apartment. They had all of their belongings, had no vehicle. They were dropped off by Lyft and picked up by Lyft. Oh, <laughs> by an Uber. Little warning sign, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, were uh, when they when they came in, I could tell that they were, and all their stuff was dirty. And I was like, oh, what's happening? You know, here. So the the, the clincher was at one thirty in the morning. One of them had just gotten off work and um, uh, was standing outside of our front door, ringing our front door. We have a, a balcony on, our, on the front of our house. And so I, I went out there and I looked at, I looked at him. And he said, I've locked a drunk, high as a kite, screaming, I've locked myself out. What's the accommodation? <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, it's in the text. You know, I was like, I said, you have to stop talking right now. Stop, stop yelling. You're going to wake up my neighbors. You know, I can't have this. Yeah. Right. Um, so the next day I called his more reasonable partner and <laughs> I said, meet me at the picnic table, you know, in the middle of the yard. It's said, going down. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you guys, you, you got, you got to go. All right. And I was new. I could have, you know, gotten the money back. I could have charged myself. I'm going to give you a full refund. Just go. I just want you, I want you out of here in 10 minutes. Right. Um, from the one night that they were in there, I got in there and there, the place was wrecked. Um, the person got sick. Oh. 
I had to throw away the rug that was in there. I mean, it was just, it was, so we have this one horror story that everybody's like, it's the one thing that everybody says, this is, I don't, I'm not going to get on Airbnb because I don't want all these things to happen. Right. And I'm like, so we, we did have that happen once, but we learned that we never had it happen since, you know, it's, it's a, every, the 99% of the folks that we, we deal with, you know, are just the most pleasant, wonderful people. Yeah. Uh, and there's some things you can do that can help that one is, is keep your prices high, right? Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't, don't try to compete with the bottom dwellers, you know, of the people that are offering, you know, <laughs> on Airbnb. It's like, yeah, you can find a place for 50 bucks, but not, not my place. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what Motel 6 is for. <laughs> They're right. That's exactly right. <laughs> But that was horrible. That was, we learned a lot. You know, I, I, I easily lost, uh, including, you know, what I would have had to pay for a cleanup company and stuff. $750 for that one night stay. So, uh, <laughs> but a, you learn, you know, you learn and you go. You got the lesson, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. Sure did. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's, oof. that's a good point, though. I mean, so having those rules in place and charging enough. That's Yeah, yeah. And and then having that um, the big text that we send that people have to agree to. That's when we instituted that. It was about I think, so like two weeks after we had started. We had that horror story. Wow. So I'm glad we had it early. And, you know. Learned. Amazing. Your wife was still like, yeah, we can still keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You just reminded me. I forgot the end of my story about the city marshal coming. The, the night before. The city marshal came that day and we had this big scare, right? We're going to get shut down. Uh, she had, we were said, oh, so but she turned to me and she said, we had some really cool guests. She loves the trees in the backyard. All right. There's these camellias back there. And so we had these, an older couple and she and I, and the older couple just kind of walked around looking at the trees for an hour talking about trees. Okay. And she turned to me and she said, I really like hosting people in our backyard. Aww. She said, I know that we have plans on buying a property and putting about 15 units on it, you know, and that's cool. I said, but I don't want to give up this one. I want this one to stay here, you know, and we host, continue to host, Aww. you know, in our backyard. And the next day, the city marshal arrives. <laughs> what I said yesterday, forget that. <laughs> this is too stressful. <laughs> no, no, no. She was more like, you know, like, oh, no, we're going to lose it. You know, it's just such a converse reaction to the three months it took me to do. Right. <laughs> just, right. just talk her into trying this. So Good for her. Yeah, I know. That's amazing. <laughs> it was very ironic. It's an emotional roller coaster. You know? yeah. I mean, <laughs> So true. So true. Well, you know, you're working with people, right? Yeah. You know, any business that works so closely with people, yeah. you know, where they sleep, where they, you oh, know, yeah. their comforts, you know, and all this kind of stuff, you're going to get kind of intertwined in their life a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we happen to be the kind of people that enjoy that. And, and, you know, and there's some people that, you know, don't, don't do that at all. And like I said, there's a way to do it very standoffish, you know, there's, there's various, you and I talk with, you know, people and know people that have um, very, very successful businesses in other states, you know, mm -hmm. so they can't really have that kind of high touch, you know, right. uh, scenario. Um, I wonder if I can do that in the future. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if my big plans, you know, would be to have several campgrounds around, around the United States, because I have a feeling that my four children will kind of go off into the world. And so we'll just, you know, if someone's in... <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. We'll put one near Phoenix, Arizona, there so we go. can, yeah, visit you know that child and grandchild and grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about retirement. That's what yeah. I think. <laughs> That's so uh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, like, do you have a place that you're thinking already for doing? Because I know you want to do a retreat center as well. Are, are you kind yeah. of? You have some property picked out and you're looking at, or where are you? No, it's, it's, it's so hard, um, to find just the right fit. Right. And as you know, you know, acquiring the property is a, is a big deal. And, you know, you, oh, once that happens, you know, I just feel like a, a ton of weight will be off my shoulders. Cause then I'll just be like, okay, let's implement the plans that we've had, you know, in, in play for a long time, yeah. but just, um, you know, we've had several, several places that have been cool, it been neat, um, but I'm really hoping for a water feature, right? Mm. We have the benefit of, in the, even though we're in town, we have this little creek that runs in our backyard. What's the difference? People love it. Yeah. People it's just love peaceful. it. We, it's instant, like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. So we built a little 
we call it the dock, but you know, it's a little deck um, out there by it. And so we're about to walk around, walk down, go sit on the, we put a table and chairs out there and, and people just love it. Even though you can see the back of the houses across the right. trees, you know, the, the neighbors there. And some, <laughs> sometimes that Creek is about three feet wide. And sometimes it's about 12, depending on rain. And sometimes there's fish and sometimes, there's not. Oh, one time, I don't know how this happened, but there was an otter in our, and in the Creek in our backyard. <laughs> He was lost. I don't know how this, we're not anywhere near where an otter should live. He went on vacation too. <laughs> <laughs> he was only there that one time. That's but so funny. We, we were able to capture him on video. <laughs> Man. Oh, that's better than what we found once. So we are, the yeah. property we bought has a, a big creek that goes all along the property. It's gorgeous. Awesome. Like, oh, I love it. Same thing. Yeah. I just love a water feature. So the first weekend after we had bought, we took some friends, we're like, hey, we're gonna go totally primitive camping, bring your tent, that's all, you know, we don't have anything there, but we're gonna go. And it's like the first weekend of March. And we go and uh, the, the guys, go, husbands go walking off and all of a sudden we get a text going, do not go in the creek. I'm like, why? You know? <laughs> so we head up there, there was a, a, a feral hog, about 300 pounds that had gotten stuck in like a log jam and oh. died and we're like, oh wow oh now we gotta sell this is horrible yeah. <laughs> so, Cursed i keep looking for it but it has long washed past but oh I'm, good there we go i'll take your otter anytime yeah yeah we were hoping he'd stay so bad we were... that would be awesome yeah feed i know him, feed him you know? <laughs> so cute you know little little thing <laughs> again crazy. i didn't even know there was otters in our town ever anywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> That is nuts. We've, we've had, um, even though, when we, I mean, like I said, we're, you know, honestly, all the the mall with all the restaurants, you know, and all that stuff is, is I can literally be there in a minute, you know, I mean, maybe two minutes, you know, drive. Um, and yet we've had four deer. Uh, one of our guests said there was four deer about seven feet in front of the front door of the glamper back there. And I said, did you take a picture? And he said, no. And it was funny because he, he had taken some pictures. He's a really good photographer and he sent me them and I actually use them on my listing. Um, but he didn't have his camera ready then. I was like, ah, <laughs> that would have been awesome. Yeah, uh, for sure. We have, we have, uh, there's two um, barn owls um, that are, are really cool people either love them or hate them because they sound like a wild monkey that's about oh, yeah. to attack you in the middle of the night <laughs> i mean it's just like what it's is that acquired taste <laughs> yeah <laughs> um it's affected how we made decisions in our backyard too my wife um has these uh chickens uh that make um little cute little tiny little eggs that are speckled and blue and you know different colors and stuff and they have fuzzy feet and i don't know all oh, the names yeah. of them but and and people love those and uh we're, she's currently building a turtle habitat um, oh because we've had these little turtles inside of our house for 10 years in this tank I like her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's all kind of like when we get the property we'll be able to do petting zoo goats yeah. and you know all the kind of stuff that you know she particularly my wife has always dreamed of doing but uh, uh but but now we're kind of starting small Yes. Our theme. <laughs> yes, it's hard to not do everything at once. I have the same thing. I love alpacas. I'm like, we're going to have to have alpacas. Oh, okay. yeah. I love gardening. I want to have like, so, you know, grow and sell flowers and produce and show people how to do. I want to keep bees. I'm like, I'm like, okay, one thing at a time. <laughs> Move to the property, build a barn that you can go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it hard. You're, make money. Brain, you know, it's like your brain is going through with so many ideas for things you'd love to share with people. And yeah. I think that's really at the core of, of hosting is just sharing. It is. It's amazing. It is. And when you do it right, like you will do, right, is you, you attract a certain type of person that is a joy to host. Yeah. I mean, these are wonderful people. They're so appreciative, right? Even when things go wrong, because things go, we have not been a perfect, you know, we got a five star, you know, average, but we, we've not been perfect hosts, sure. right? Um, uh, you know, electricity is too, the glamper is not built for very much power, right? Yeah. And so actually in the last month, our, our current challenge is because I updated the uh, water heater, went from propane to electric and the, uh, it's blown a fuse with guests there three times, right? Mm -hmm. Now they've all been very reasonable and, you know, understanding and, and stuff. And I've been responsive, of course, to it, but we're in the process of getting more power, you know, back there to be able to solve that problem. But they've been very understanding, right? Now, if I haven't, if I 
wasn't attracting um, people that were looking for a unique stay and an experience and stuff, then you know, that's a great opportunity for someone to demand, you know, their money back, you know, sure. um, never, not once. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That says a lot about how you and Mary are as hosts then, because I mean, they're loving their experience overall, we try so to... they're like, oh, oh no power that's fine it's fine <laughs> but these people are we're really hot and humid but... <laughs> oh, that's incredible that's incredible now casey here's the here's the 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 left turn we're taking in the this episode because you have something going that's really cool so i'm just going to open it i'm going to introduce uh, introduce it like this some of you who are listeners, some of you uh, are very interested in starting your own, like, how do I do this? How do I mm-hmm. create a unique stay type of, you know, guest experience and get going on this? And I live here or I live there and, you know, how do I do this? Well, that's one reason I'm really glad Casey's here. So Casey <laughs> has a course <laughs> and it is spectacular. I've gone through, I devour, I'm like, oh, I'll just take a little peek. Well, it's kind of like opening a bag of Doritos. You know, next thing you know, like, <laughs> you're at the end going, that's it. Can <laughs> I be cool ranch? If, oh, you're, if sure, I'm going to be compared sure, to a Dorito, course, I want to be cool ranch. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so would you talk a little bit about your course and how that came to be and, and how that goes? Like, uh, I would love to hear like how it's been received by your students. Sure. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's funny. My, uh, um, I've been a counselor for 25 years and I've kind of moved my whole counseling program and now coaching program uh, online. And so that I, I told my existing, right before when COVID started, I shut down my office and I said, guess what? You guys are no longer clients. You are subscription membership. <laughs> You're members now, you know, they pay a monthly membership fee. They get access to all my courses for, you know, anger management, assertiveness, you know, uh, forgiveness, uh, you know, the, the, these things that I would teach in session. And I basically automated my counseling, you know, program and that we still do a one-on-ones, but it's also uh, laced with a lot of online homework, you know, for them, them to do. And so I'd already been doing that for a couple of years. And then when I had guest after guest that just said, I really want to do this, you know, could you help me? You know, I have questions and I thought, you know, I, I build courses do now for a living. So uh, the easiest thing for me to do was just to create a course um, called Small Beginnings. And um, I'm not the coach for you. Um, if you have big plans and you want to own, you know, a hundred doors and, uh, you know, rip them out or do massive arbitrage or, you know, any of these big scale things. But if you're wanting to start small, and what a lot of people, you know, Susan don't realize is, is that not only can you rent out your sofa on Airbnb tonight, <laughs> you know, is that that's how Airbnb started. A lot of people don't realize that uh, it, how Airbnb, this gigantic, you know, industry now struggled to get started was three college students had a uh, put three air mattresses, so the air and Airbnb got started in their attic and rented it out for you know for people to stay in, you know while they went to while they're college students, right? <laughs> That's how this huge uh, sharing economy, you know, industry leader uh, got its start. And so you still can do that. You can rent out your sofa tonight. If you got a spare bedroom, even better, right? You know, if you've got a, a garage that you can, you know, or, or pool house or mother-in-law suite or a uh, bonus room um, that you can kind of seal off from the rest of the house, even better, right? Uh, if you've got rental property, you can convert it, you know, all, all these things. But uh, the way that we did it, as we already described is, is we put a unit in our backyard. Um, the that little about 120 square foot glamper out there actually uh, and consistently pays every bill for our 3000 square foot house. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, you're, you're just like, how does that happen? So this is something called house hacking. And so if you haven't heard of house hacking, Google it. It's a, it, it, if you're at all interested, you'll dive in and it'll be just wonderful. There's a, there's a great book. I'm trying to remember the name the young author uh, that I just finished. I can't get enough of it, but there's so many forms of house hacking that's out there. Well, this one is in some ways one of the least invasive, right? You know, to your privacy, to your household, to your family, right? Is to have a separate unit that you end very quick. You know, you can quickly put it, you know, in your backyard. Um, but if you want to start small, I can help you with that. You know, the, the, I can't, I, I'm not going to help you start big. If you're one of those people, you're way above my head, right? Uh, but if you want to start small and grow, 
there's some tips and things that I have for you. And I have a little a little course that um, uh, that Sue will put a link in, I'm sure, for being able to to find it and utilize it. Um, one of the cool things about Airbnb that a lot of people don't realize is, is that once you become a super host and you get established for a while, and so we've been blessed enough to be a super host from the first evaluation and have, you know, you, you're reevaluated every three months and have kept it is, is that you're, whenever you uh, help somebody else join Airbnb, it's called an affiliate link, is that they will pay you uh, a, an affiliate commission to do that. I also consider it like a commission for mentoring. And mm -hmm. so um, initially it's $600, right? $600 to, to do that, right? Um, once you become a super host, it goes up to $720. So not out of your pocket, but out of Airbnb's pocket, you know, they'll, they'll pay me $720 to mentor you. you know, that's well, fantastic. I'm impressed actually, that they, they do it because that, that speaks well to them wanting to, you know, help people create great experiences. That is them. so true. That is so true. Yeah. And they know that, 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 that they, they hope you, that doesn't have a mentoring requirement. I just yeah. do that because. Because uh, like you're a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun, you know, for me, I like to help people do that. And I helped a lot of people, yeah. you know, do their first, um, you know, rental and stuff. It's just a fun world to get into. It's a very low barrier to entry. And if you don't like it, you shut down your listing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not, it's not a big deal. You know, it, and, and so many things in the sharing economy, which I'm just so happy about today. I'm just so happy that there's so many apps on our phone you know, that you can get on your phone that can do some really great stuff. And it's really changing the lives of a lot of people. And mm -hmm. I, I, I just love that. And so this is one of those. And so again, I'm not the guru for you if you're, you know, wanting to make millions and, you know, do it fast or you're a big investor or that kind of stuff. There's, there's other people that can do a great job, you know, for you. But if you are like me, kind of a, a middle, you know, maybe even your, you know, a little bit less than middle, you know, class, you can start, you can, you can get it started and do something like this. We had one lady that, um, uh, she really surprised me. She's kind of an older lady. Um, and she's, you find when you have a unique stay like this, that I have a lot of hosts that like mm. to stay, you know, sure. with me, you know, one is because Airbnb, when you get super host, you get a hundred dollars to spend on Airbnb. So they want to spend oh. their, their money. Yeah. <laughs> they want to, they want to spend it and they like to go see something different. Right. And so uh, on one thing, you know, you, there's, there's, if you get on some of these sites, I don't recommend it, but Airbnb, I mean, uh, Facebook groups has a lot of hosting sites and a lot of them are just garbage. I mean, it's just like the most negative people on the planet. Yeah, it'll do it. It'll make you want to jump off a bridge. Oh, <laughs> gosh, and, yeah. Uh, I mean, absolutely everything. I, I will use them sometimes if I have a question that I need an answer for real quick. I'll post my question. As soon as I get like an answer, oh, okay, there's the resource that I need. I'll delete the whole post because yeah. an hour later, you got 60 people in there bashing you about how stupid you are. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm exactly. like, I already went through that year of do it looking foolish. I'm, I've learned the lesson. I'm not going to take the abuse now, you know, so I just delete <laughs> the whole thing, but I won't, I won't, you don't, don't stay on those because one, they'll convince you that, you know, it's just horrible. <laughs> you know, yes. and there is horrible experiences that people have. I described one, you know, to yeah. you today. But, you know, we had our one. We're done. Yes. But to hear them <laughs> talk, you, I mean, this is like your whole view of humanity will go. <laughs> you <know? laughs> if you're having horrible experience after horrible experience, the common denominator is you. <laughs> you're a bad host. <laughs> you should learn something. You know? yep. <laughs> but, but anyway, there, there is just so much to learn. And um, I forgot my point. Now. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the older lady. You know, oh, yeah, thank you. The older lady. Come. Yeah. 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 So, you know, she, and she lived down in Florida and uh, she just had a very simple three, two, you know, three bedroom, two bath house. She only used one of her bedrooms. So she rented out the other two bedrooms. Right. And she says, my friends just think that I'm crazy. They think that, you know, that I'm putting myself at great risk and, and all that. She said, I have never had a problem. She, she said, do you rent to just women? No, I rent to men. Mostly it's traveling men, you know, that, that come and stay. Right. You know, they need to be in the area for a weekend or, a, you know, a week or something. Um, and, uh, I fixed them breakfast in the morning. You know, you don't have to do that. Uh, it, they, they, but she's never felt at all, um, you know, scared or, or anything like that. And so that's how she started. Now that that's, that paradigm's not for everybody. And I'm not suggesting that everybody, uh, adopt it, but if this lady can do that, what can you do? You know, mm -hmm. particularly if you've got an area that you can square off or that you can, you know, even put, you know, a, 
you don't have to do a glamper. You could do a tent, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on your, you and I were talking earlier about the humidity in yeah. Alabama and Georgia. In the South tents are big <laughs> <I got> problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in other areas, I mean, I mean, I just love geodesic domes. And oh, I yeah. love the safari tents and the things that can, you know, if you don't have the kind of humidity that we have to deal with, that can be great. I mean, mm -hmm. why not? Why not? I love it. What's the best help part about all of it for you? Uh, definitely the interactions with people. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I like that most people are not used to, um, I hate to say it this way, but heavy handed hosting. So, you know, I'm kind of, you know, uh, and, and, and I've, I definitely have had to learn very quickly the balance of when to back off, you know, and give space. So I'm very, you know, I greet people whenever they arrive. Sometimes they're resistant to being greeted they just want their their place and that's fine they can they can do a you know self-check-in um but usually i'm able to kind of schmooze them and say can i can i, can I show you a few things you know where things are and i get in there and and but you know i, I keep trying to leave and they keep re-engaging me in conversation you know and, and 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 so it's you know frequently it's a 20 you know it could be you know i i aim at a three minute yeah <laughs> here's where the electricity is here's where the light switches here's how to do this you know um if here's how to use an RV toilet, yeah. I, my favorite question to ask people is, you know, have you ever pooped in a camper before? <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's not a big deal, but let me show you. Yeah. Here, you pull yeah. this, right? <laughs> do this. That's great. Uh, but they, uh, but then even some of the, I don't know, coldest acting people on text, you know, just warm up and they get the most glowing thing because one, I think we're in these post COVID years where people, we've lost this human touch, yeah. right? We've lost this, uh, I don't touch anybody, but <laughs> this, <laughs> this interaction, you know, with, with a real human being, yeah. uh, especially over a uh, platform, you know, or, I'm sure. um, they're, they're, just, they're just not used to that. Now. Yeah, yeah. So usually they they'll gush. You know, if you read our reviews and our listing, you, they'll, they'll gush and gush on how nice everybody was and how refreshing that was, and you know, so that that that's really cool. So I I guess if I have to look back and you know if I stop doing it today, ten years from now, and I look back and go, what did I like about that? I would probably say it's been the the connections, the human interaction. I'm still in contact with some of our guests from two years ago. Wow. Yeah. You know. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really, I'm not surprised though. I mean, <laughs> I'm a pretty friendly guy. That's sweet. That's <laughs> awesome. You. So Casey, where can people find you? Okay. Excuse me. Probably the easiest thing is my website, which is my full name. Uh, I'm Casey Corbin, but CaseyColeCorbin.com, uh, which is C-A-S-E-Y-C-O-L-E. It's my middle name. That's important. Corbin, C-O-R-B-I-N. Um, there is a comedian named Casey Corbin. I if you thought Google that him, name sounded familiar. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I, he, uh, I'm sure he's a great guy. Uh, Don't try to go stay in his backyard. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> his humor is a little bit more lewd than I want to be known for. So <laughs> I always tell people, Casey Cole Corbin. <laughs> Put my middle name in there. Uh, and that will get you to my main site. And uh, uh, I'm sure we'll do a link for the uh, the course yeah. and stuff, you know, on there too. And then that inside the course has all of the um, links to like my site and stuff if you want to see that. But it's not hard to find. So um, be, be happy to share that with anybody. That's fantastic. In case you want to have you be... back too. Because oh, uh, yeah. as you move forward, I want to hear like as you go through your you know property hunt and starting yeah. to develop it and all that and Ditto, i start I'm, going too i'm gonna know i'm gonna have some more questions so. <laughs> <laughs> i'm very excited about watching yours you know your progress too you Thank got such you. a great plan you got the property yeah. you know just those next steps uh just so exciting so yeah. exciting yeah they can also email me my email is casey at caseycolecorbin.com so if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them that way too very so. kind of you. That's <laughs> fantastic. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And Thanks for having me, Susan. This has been great. I really appreciate your mission, what you're doing here. It's so helpful. Um, I, I, I'm, uh, I will watch, I have started watching all your videos. I will make sure that I watch every one of them. Uh, thank you. They're, they're I think great. they're getting better and better. I feel bad for the early guests. <laughs> like, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> That's life, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we do. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. And that's a wrap for this episode of Glampalooza. We hope you enjoyed your journey into the world of glamping and learned something new. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on all things glamping. And if you love this episode, please share it with your friends and family. Until next time.
get outside and play.